Your Royal Highness, Lord Lieutenant, Fellows, Benefactors, Members of College. What is the purpose of a Cambridge College in the 21st century? I'm sure that each of you will have a different answer. Some in Cambridge might even be affronted by the question. But that is what has always made St Edmunds special. We were founded out of a belief in the excellence of the education and research offered by the University of Cambridge and from a conviction that the status quo was inadequate. That makes us open to refreshment, reimagining and revival. On the cusp of our 125th anniversary, there are three things from our founding I want to touch on to help answer that question. The first was the final repeal in the 1870s of the Test Acts. These had seen Roman Catholics, among, along with other religious minorities, legally excluded from the full life of the university. The second was the initial reluctance of the bishops and the Holy See to recognise that access to a secular education and research environment would benefit Catholic scholars, not expose and undermine them. This combined with a vehemence within parts of the university that those with particular religious perspectives would strangle free thought. The subtext of the Exclusionary Test Acts and the debates that tried to hold back our founders remain live today. Fear. Fear of change. Fear of challenge. Fear that loyalties might lie elsewhere. Our Catholic founders confronted those fears to make a clear case that no one should be excluded from the intellectual rigour, challenge and attainment of Cambridge on the basis of who they are or what they believe. They also held that the open meeting of different perspectives is a stimulus to our four objectives, education, religion, learning and research, not a threat. So back to my original question, what is the point of a Cambridge College? As a former diplomat, I believe that to influence and lead today, whether running a multinational corporation, cutting edge research or a country, it is not enough to have a world-class degree a Cambridge education provides. Leaders also need strong interpersonal skills, an understanding of issues beyond their area of expertise, and the ability to speak across cultures. That is what St Edmunds offers. Here, within our 10 acres, we welcome the world. With over 80 nationalities represented each year and offering every degree course, there are few places, other than perhaps the UN headquarters, where one can be immersed each day in such a rich diversity. And few people have time in New York to sit under an apple tree and reflect, captain a vote boat to victory on the cam, or learn the meaning of teamwork in a choir. I said there were three things from our founding. The last is that we exist through the generosity of the 15th Duke of Norfolk, who bought what is now the building named in his honour and provided the endowment of £5,000 necessary for us to be approved by the university. The generosity of the Duke is not in doubt. The adequacy of the amount set by the university is. We remain the poorest college. That makes us nimble and means we spend what we receive thoughtfully and well. But as we look to our next 125 years, we must harness the attraction of our vision to set our finances on a fairer course. So to answer the question I originally posed, in a world in which COVID is only one of many shared crises, in a world that has become bewildering for many, and in which diversity and faith and difference are once again viewed by some as problems, not opportunities. St Edmund's College is both an oasis and a microcosm, a place to explore ideas and perspectives on a human scale, a place of friendship and welcome, a place of personal and intellectual growth for those who will shape the future for millions in countries across the globe. Do we not owe it to ourselves to get that right? That is the purpose of this Cambridge College. And with the support, ma'am, of our members and friends, old, new and as yet undiscovered, that is what St Edmunds must grow and secure for the next 125 years.